Hi everybody and welcome to another tips and tricks video. My name is Dan Lopez and I am the application specialist for Tecla PowerFab. Uh, today we are going to talk about the most complete export method from your detailing software into Tecla APM production control, the XML files. Uh, before we jump right into it, let me explain the other options briefly. Uh, so we can actually know the differences between them. Uh, okay, so let's talk first about the BIF option. Uh, BIF actually stands for Build Interchange Format. Uh, this is a type that was utilized back in the day when people had to pay some extra money to be able to export KISS files. Uh, even though it's still an available option in some detailing softwares, uh, it's not really being developed anymore, so it has limited capacities of what you can include or not. Then we also have the Excel files. I, I don't think that requires any explanation of what it is, but uh, just an FYI, we do have a standard templates that you can get from help desk in case you want to use it for some of those napkin drawings or job site orders that sometimes never made it to the model. Uh, that can be a helpful solution. Always my recommendation will be anyways, everything should be part of your model. Right, but if I understand also that that's not possible always, uh, so Excel can be a good option to help you to import those drawings. Or even if you have a 2D detailing solution, uh, they can create Excel templates that can be easily imported into Tecla IPM. Then we have the KISS files. Uh, KISS stands for Keep It Simple Still, and that name actually describes what these files are. They are indeed very simple, uh, therefore, you have limitations about what you can get from them. Uh, for example, no user defined attributes of the drawings or the still parts are included. Uh, the file contains only the bill of materials and you can also include weld and holes for estimating purposes in case you are actually importing uh, some of those into your estimate jobs. Uh, during the process of import, you can link the drawings and the CNC files to, to Tecla APM and you just need to have them generated already from your model. And in the case of the drawings, make sure that the file name match the assembly mark. Something extra to know for those clients using Trimble Connect as his visualization and collaboration tool uh, is that you are not supposed to be using a, an IFC file with a KISS file. Uh, we make it work. We develop an extra process where you, once you import your KISS file, uh, go and actually read the GUID numbers from your IFC, the same IFC that you are actually uploading into Trimble Connect, and in that way it will work. Uh, you just need to make sure that you run this process when you make changes uh, to the model and therefore you have a new IFC file. Lastly, we have the XML, so let me just close this out. And here we have the XML option. Uh, these type of files are very useful and contain way more details than the KISS file. Uh, to get one XML export, you will use the Tecla APM plugin. So let me just pull the screen of Tecla here. If you are working in a version of Tecla structures from 2019 and newer, uh, Tecla APM is by default included. Otherwise, if you are using 2018i or older, uh, you can still use the FabSuite TME tool. I will also recommend you to make sure that you have the latest version of the Tecla APM plugin. Uh, you can download the latest one from the Tecla Warehouse downloads web page. Okay, so after the drawings have been generated in your model, the information can be exported using the Tecla APM plugin. Uh, I will first though plot the drawings into a PDF uh, just so they are carried over with the XML and everyone can access them in your shop because, you know, PDF is a very common type of file, right? And there's tons of different web-based or desktop free viewers. So it's a good idea to plot all your files so they are in a PDF format available for you. So once that's done, uh, you can go to your Tecla APM plugin and have in mind that you can either export the whole model, you can export a selection from your document management drawing list, or you can export a selection from your model itself. Uh, in this case, I'll just go ahead and do all of it. Uh, also have in mind that you can include either all the assembly drawings, single part drawings or, or gather sheets, uh, direction or general arrangements drawings, and also multi drawings if that's a format that you usually utilize for your jobs. 
You get to choose also if you want to include the attributes from the drawings and the parts. In the case of the drawings will be, you know, dates, like who who and when it was detailed and checked by. Uh, the, in the case of the attributes from the parts can be anything that you have under your user defined attributes. For example, in this particular column, uh, let me see what I have in there. I have the SP on the user field one, and it's because I am using that as my route um, for that particular type of piece. This is a pain piece. Uh, if I show you something, I think this column right here, it's galvanized. Yeah, so the finish is galvanized. So if I go and check my actual user defined attributes, I am using a different route name for those pieces. So that route will be imported at the same time with my bill of materials and I don't have to be worried about assigning any route in production control to the pieces. So have that in mind. It's not mandatory that you need to use the attributes, but you know, if you, if you want to export something to the category, subcategory field for reports purposes or, or something like that, uh, it's a good option to use. Uh, you can also have the option to include the hardware uh, in your bill of materials or not. So I know that some people like to avoid that, and that's one big difference against KISS file. There is by default included. Here you have the option to include it or not. Um, and then, of course, the attributes of that, and, and if you have any welding studs. Also, you may have noticed that this plugin, it looks a little bit different of yours in case you are using an older version. Um, in this one, we have all these different paths for the different type of files. That is used in case you have uh, single part drawings with the same name as the assembly drawing. In that case, uh, it's a Windows limitation, right? You cannot save uh, files with the same name into the same folder. Uh, so if you have those separated into different folders, you can select all the different paths uh, to pull those drawings. But if not, you can always use only use the, the default path, and that will go and pull all the drawings for you and it will separate them uh, for you. You don't have to separate them yourself. So for the CNC files, you also have the option to don't include them if you don't necessarily need them in the MIS system. Uh, you can generate them at the same time. You just choose the actual group, like I have here the angles, the plates, the profiles, or the standard configuration. You just make sure that you use the right one. Or if you have them generated beforehand, you just select this one and this will actually go and pull them from the path in your model folder. So I'll just, I'll, I like the generate CNC files option because you are always making sure that you have the latest revision of your CNC file being exported in, in case of any change. Then the last thing you just go and export this and this will generate the file for you uh, with all the folders and subfolders that you need for this to be ready. It's exporting the CNC files. It's almost done. And they will just draw me the path right here where you can get the file. And it actually opens the folder. As you can see, it's the second folder, that, the second file that I have generated. Uh, I open this and the XML is inside, the drawing folder with all the drawings is inside, and all the CNC files is inside. Uh, also, something to remember here, it's since the Tecla IPN module can interact with Trimble Connect. Uh, you can from here either export the IFC from the export options. And we have, uh, there are different configurations that work for that, right? Uh, we have one already that it's created for ST modeling, but also works pretty good for uh, the production control option. Uh, but you can also have the option if you are using Tecla Structures uh, 2020 to just go to Trimble Connect and start the collaboration of your model with a Trimble Connect project in particular. And that will just give you the option to then go to to the links here on the Trimble Connect tab and upload the model straight from here. You just select the project that you are interacting with on this. Uh, let me just go and select this one real quick. Okay. That links the project to Trimble Connect and then I can actually just upload the model. It will save the changes and upload the latest version of the model. So in this way, your detailers can be up updating this, uh, you know, every, every, even once a day. And you will be able to see what they have modeled, even if this is not still part of your bill of materials, but you can track the detailing in that way. So real quick, let me just show you in Tecla IPM. Uh, this is the job. I can just uh, launch the model interface. And that should uh, open Trimble Connect and go straight to that job. And the model that I just uploaded is here. 
directly so you don't have to be worried about uploading an IFC file if you are working with the latest versions of Tecla structures and Tecla EPM and this uses the IFC talks to the model right I can select this in in the model and it will just go and show me where that particular channel it is anyway so last thing I want to show you today are two clips for those customers of us who are not using Tecla structures uh, one from SDS and one from Advanced Steel, so you can see how the information can be exported for uh, from those two software. So let me switch the screens real quick. So first, in, in the SDS2 scenario, from the bottom right, you will find the SDS2 full transfer, those three yellow folders. Uh, that opens the menu that allows you to, to select the options for your export. This will generate an XML, and also it can export your drawings and your CNC files as well. So in this example, you choose what do you want to export, the, the options that you want to include into this, if you want a zip file or not, and then I'll just go ahead and click OK. And this generates the export. Uh, that generates the same uh, folder with the XML, the drawings, and the CNC files on it. In the case of Advanced Steel, uh, you do your selection of what you want to export. It has to be selected, uh, and then you can actually go to the Export Import menu and select the SMLX format. That's the one that we will be actually using for this. This will ex include the bill of material, the drawings in a DWG format. If you want them in PDF, uh, they will have to be imported into EPM separately, and it will include also the CNC files. So I'll just go ahead and export this, and this is a sample of what you get out of this is a zip folder that includes the, the information that you see on the screen. And so that will be it for today. I hope this encouraged you to use the XML rather than other formats. It is just a better format and it, it can include more information. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, co to contact your local help desk area. And thank you for watching.